Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and I just built myself a new electric longboard so today I'm going to be showing you how to build an electric longboard or an electric skateboard just like this one. Alright, so here are all the parts that I'm going to use to build this skateboard. Now the first thing you're going to need is a skateboard or longboard deck. I got this one from Amazon, it's just a bamboo deck and I really like this one just basically because of how it looks. It's got this cool sort of tribal tiki thing going on. I don't really know exactly what it is, but I liked it, so I picked this one up. Uh, this is just a bare deck, but you can also start with a, um, you know, a skateboard or a longboard that already has trucks and wheels, and you just remove those. I've done that in the past, but this one I figured I'd just start with a bare deck. Let's see, next, you're gonna need a battery. So uh, this is the battery that uh, comes from my custom design batteries on electricskateboardparts.com. This one is a Samsung 25R 10S2P battery, which basically means it's about 36 volts and five amp hours. So this should be good for at least 10 miles or so, maybe more, depending on how you ride. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna have the motors. These are two of the same type of motor. These are 800 watt uh, hub motors. So instead of having an exterior motor and a um, belt drive and a pulley system, this is all built into one. It's called a hub motor because the motor is actually in the hub of the wheel. And so these are real simple to use. I prefer them to uh, external motors with the pulley system just because, you know, they're quieter and um, it's just a simpler system that doesn't require as much maintenance or really any maintenance. So I've got two of these 800 watt motors. So this is going to be a 1600 watt uh, electric longboard. Then I've got two just standard 90 millimeter longboard wheels. Next, we've got our trucks. We have our rear trucks here with the longer axle. This is where the uh, hub motor is going to go. And these are the front trucks that have a shorter axle for just the standard longboard wheels. Next, we have our dual electronic speed controller or dual ESC. This is two controllers that are basically wired together so that they can share the same uh, remote or same throttle. And each one of these is going to run one of those two motors because you can't run two motors off of one controller. And then lastly, we have the remote or the uh, transmitter. This is the basically the throttle of the skateboard. And so this is going to connect using this receiver. The receiver connects right in here to the uh, dual ESC. So this remote is going to connect and this is going to give us our uh, you know, throttle and our braking. All right, so these are all the parts you're going to need. Everything here came from either Amazon or electricskateboardparts.com. Um, and I'll put links to each one of these in the description below. Now let's get to building. The first thing I'll do is bolt my trucks onto the deck with the short axle trucks on the front and the long axle trucks on the rear. Note that the big center nut on the kingpin will face forward on the front trucks and towards the rear on the rear trucks. Next, I'll put the front wheels on, first by placing one washer on the axle, followed by the wheel, then a second washer, followed by the lock nut. Then I'll tighten down the nut, making sure not to over tighten the nut on the bearings. And then the same steps for putting on the other wheel. Now the rear hub motors are installed similarly. First you put a washer, then the motor with the wire on the inside, and making sure that the square part of the shaft lines up with the square hole on the hub motor, and then followed by another washer and a lock nut. At this point, I can lay out the rest of my components, including the battery and the dual speed controller on my board, to see how I want them to fit. Now I can also do a test and make sure that everything works. I'll plug in my motor's thick phase wires and thin hall sensor wires into the matching port on each controller being careful with the thin hall sensor wires since they're fairly fragile. Next I can plug in my receiver and then my battery. Now I can press the on off button on the controller to turn on the skateboard. It's hard to see in the bright sunlight but the flashing LED on the receiver tells me that it needs to find the remote. To pair the remote to the receiver make sure that the skateboard is turned off first. Then hold the power button on the remote for about three seconds to turn it on then keep holding it for another four seconds to get the blinking lights on the remote that show you that you're ready to pair. Now simply push the on button on the controller to turn on the skateboard and the receiver should instantly pair to the remote, making the LED on the receiver turn solid. Now you can push the button on the remote up slowly to engage the motors. You want to check that they're spinning in the correct direction. Mine are actually spinning backwards, which means that I plugged each motor into the wrong controller. I'll just need to unplug the motor wires and then plug them back into the offset controllers. Now my motors are spinning in the correct direction. There are many ways to hold your components to the board, but I'm going to use some industrial glue to put down some Velcro which will hold my battery onto the bottom of my board. I'll use something heavy to hold the Velcro down while it's drying, and then do the same to the battery using the other side of the Velcro. I'll also use Velcro to hold the dual ESC to the battery, 
but I'll use some epoxy for this, since the controller isn't as heavy. Now you could leave your board like this once the glue and epoxy dry to the Velcro. This board is fully functional, and I've got other boards that I've ridden around like this for months just fine, with the components simply Velcroed on and the wires taped down. However, the components are still exposed, so you wouldn't want to go riding around in the middle of a thunderstorm or something. To make this look nicer and to seal off all the components, I'm going to make a fiberglass enclosure for the board. I made a video all about making these fiberglass enclosures before, so I won't go into too much detail now. But basically, I started by laying down some wax paper on my board under a wooden mold that I had covered in duct tape and rubbed with wax to make it come out of the fiberglass easier later. Then I mixed up my resin and laid down a series of layers of resin and fiberglass cloth, each on top of each other. Then after the fiberglass had hardened, I sanded it smooth and pulled the mold out. Then I cut the edges back and drilled holes for my wires, my on-off button, and the charging port, and made sure that they all fit. Now I didn't want to ruin the artwork on the bottom of the board with just like a plain black enclosure, so I first hit it with some tan colored spray paint to sort of match the bamboo wood grain, and then I did my best to mimic the original artwork on top of the enclosure. I'm an engineer, not an artist, but I think I did a decent job. I needed to extend my on-off switch wires next to reach the front of the enclosure, so I added a length of wire to the existing wires. I also cut the charging port off of the battery, and then passed it through the hole in the enclosure before soldering it back. I also wanted a little window to be able to see the LED on the receiver, so I drilled a small hole and I hot glued the receiver with its LED in front of the hole. I also put a drop of hot glue on the nuts for the button and the charging port to keep them from vibrating loose in the future. Lastly, I placed the enclosure in its spot and drilled holes through the deck to mount it with wood screws. And that's it! Now the board is done and it's ready to ride in style. And I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Um, it really preserved the look I was going for and it's just an awesome performing electric longboard. All right, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found that video helpful and entertaining. And um, last thing, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the winner is... Misfit Toymaker. Congratulations. Just send me a private message here on YouTube. Let me know which one of my books you'd like. Either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, DIY Lithium Batteries, or DIY Solar Power. And I'll send that book out to you. And for anyone else who wants to win a copy of one of my books, all you have to do is put a comment in this, uh, below this video, anything you want to say, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Alright, thanks for watching guys.